Part eight of Palador by Henry Newbolt. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapters twenty two to twenty four. Chapter twenty two of the adventure of the howling beast. Thereafter Ewan continued in weariness, and in despite and anger against the great ones of Palador, for he perceived how they had devised these adventures of a very purpose, so that they might have him at their will, by fellowship or else by treason. Moreover, he longed greatly to see his lady again, and could not, and of such longing also comes weariness, when a man sees time go by, and nothing bettered. So Ewan made search in all Palador, if he might but hear tell of the Lady Enya, and he found some few that would speak of her, and little he got of them, for one would say how she was gone into a far country, and one how she was ever a wanderer, and thereby they intended no good thing, for their meaning touched on Alador, howbeit they named not the name. So Ewan went to and fro, and returned continually to the house where he had seen her, and in a three days he came there twenty times, and at last he thought to lie like a dog before her doorway. Then at this time Sir Reynolds sent a messenger to him, and said that in two adventures Ewan had done great pleasure to his lord the prince, and he gave him to think that by the achieving of the third adventure he might well establish himself. And Ewan believed him not, for he knew better, but by reason of his despair he made assent, for he cared not what might become of him. So upon the morrow, very early, two came and called him forth, and they brought him a horse and an axe, but no gear else. And he went with them, apparelled in the coat and hat of his pilgrimage. Then he asked them of the adventure, and they told him thereof, and the manner of it was, that he should enter into a certain park, and hew therein a tree, and the tree might be which he would, but he must hew it within a day and a night, and it must be down before the daybreak. And as for the hazard and the pain of the adventure, they said how that came by the howling of the beast, for at the sound of the axe it would howl beyond endurance, so that none might hear it, and be the man he was aforetime. Now the park was from the city a two hours' journey, and there was a high wall about it, and a strong gate thereto. And there were some within which were appointed to keep the beast, but they were all deaf men, and heard nothing in the world. So they that brought Ewan there unlocked the gate, and they gave him the axe, and bade him enter quickly, for they were in haste to be gone. Then he left his horse and entered, and the gate was shut upon him, and he could well hear those men departing, for they rode as men in fear. Then he looked and saw how the park was all full of thickets, very dark and tangled of old growth, and he went forward slowly, lifting high his feet. And as he went it bechanced that he struck his axe against a tree, and wounded it chipwise. And immediately there came a noise beside him, like the growling of a great hound, and therewith a fear took him that was like a fear out of childhood, for it was quicker than thought and more deep within him, and he looked all ways and saw nothing, and he listened and heard the beating of his heart. Then he went forward again, and found a place that was open ground, and it was a green valley between the thickets, and in the midst of the valley stood a goodly elm tree, Yet was the goodliness of it by semblance only, for within bark it was long since gone and rotten. And Ewan came to the elm tree, and struck it wilfully, for he was there in a clear field, and thought to see the truth of the matter. But in his stroke his senses departed from him, for there came a noise behind him such as he heard never in all his days, no, nor dreamed thereof in an evil dream for it was like the roaring of a wild bull, and like the howling of a dog upon a grave. And when he heard it, his life turned black within him, and his heart was angered even to madness. And he swung his axe and struck the tree haphazard, as a man may strike that is blinded in battle. And his fear was greater than his courage, 
and his anger was greater than his fear. So he went smiting, and his hands were bruised and his body shaken, and the beast howled even more loud, and the rage of it pierced Ewan's heart and broke it utterly. For when he heard that sound, it seemed to him that he was hated of all men, and of himself also, and he felt his life perishing into dust, as the grain perishes between the millstones. And his strength went from him momently, so that in no long time he had been mad or dead, save only for the help wherewith he was holpen presently. For in his misery there came to him a sound of clear music, as a lantern comes to a child that is lost in darkness. And the music was of a reed only, yet there was within it a voice singing that was as plain as words. For as Ewan heard it, he thought on old and noble wars, and he remembered in his heart the names of them which had renown therein, and he feared no more to be hated, for he had part with them. And therewith the howling of the beast became faint and without meaning, as a noise that is very far off. And Ewan's strength came again to him, and he hewed with might and with measure, and in a hundred strokes he felled the tree end long. Then with the fall of that tree the noise of howling ceased, and Ewan looked and saw that he had been long in his madness, for it was now the last hour of the day, and the music that he heard ceased not, but the voice changed within it, for it sang no more of old things but of new. And as he heard it, Ewan forgot all the ills that he had suffered in all his life, and he thought on such a place as might be the land of his desire, and it seemed to him that he was not far therefrom. Then his thought went from him, and he slept. And when he awoke it was grey dawn, and he rose up and began to go from that place. And as he went, there met him a herd-girl with a herd of black swine, and in her hand was a little pipe of wood. And when Ewan saw the pipe, he remembered how he had been holpen overnight. Then he thought to ask of the herd-girl what might be the music which had come to him, and she held up her pipe before him and said, Sir, there is here no music but of this only, for here are none but deaf men, and I that pipe to the deaf. But whither you go there is music enough, for you will go as I think by the high road. And therewith she left him and went further. But as she went she looked again at him, and she smiled as with remembrance. And in her smiling he saw his lady the third time. Yet he saw her not to his profit, but as a man may see an image in a glass, which is certainly of the world visible, but in no wise of the life thereof. So he looked only, and let her go from him. Chapter 23 How Ewan emprised to go to the city of the saints, and so into the delectable isle. So within a while he came to the gate, and found it wide open, and when he had passed out, he looked towards Palador, for they which brought him thence had spoken of a day and a night, and they said how they would return again thereafter if perchance they might find him still in life and understanding. And as he looked, he saw far off a company that moved upon the road hitherward, but he perceived that they came not a horse but a foot, and they were not two but many. Also they were banded in good order as they came, and kept measure, foot by foot, and they sang all together, and that which they sang was a godly hymn, but it was some deal fierce in the singing. Then Ewan stood still to mark their passing, but they left him not so, for when they were now going by him, he saw among them the young man named Bartholomew, that was friend to him in Palador. And Bartholomew had sight of Ewan also in the same instant, and he ceased from his singing and ran out of the company, and came to Ewan and took him by the two hands, and he entreated him to be of the company and to go with them. And Ewan was little loath, for he saw how their backs were turned on Palador, and he cared not greatly whither where he went, so only he went not to that city. So he gave Bartholomew neither nay nor yea to his entreaty, but he began to go with him slowly, 
following behind the company. And as they went, Ewan began to ask of him, to what place they were going, and on what adventure. And Bartholomew answered him quickly, and said how that it was no adventure, but a high emprise, sounding in life and death, yea, of their very souls. For they were aweary of Palador, and misdoubted of all the customs there, seeing how they were hard customs with no kindness or godliness in them. Also he said how that in all the world there might no peace be found, save only in the city of the saints, and that was by report far off and beset of many enemies. Yet were they vowed both to come thither and to dwell therein, if by endurance and good hope they might achieve their vows. Then Ewan asked him, Whence then hath the city this peace? And Bartholomew said, The report of it is diverse, for some men say of it that it cometh by one way, and some by another. At first by conquest, for they that dwell there do continually subdue their enemies, but this to my thinking is a doubtful saying. And secondly, as some have said, it cometh by hope of reward, for the people of the saints trade thence into the delectable isle, where a man may have all that he will, whether of gold or of ivory. And this also, said Bartholomew, I take for profit rather than for peace. But the third way is by good ordinance, for in that city they follow not their own will, nor strive amongst themselves, but every one to serve another. Also they do nothing waywardly, but all things by rule and governance. And for this peace I long both by day and by night. Then, as he heard him, Ewan was kindled a little, and he said within himself, I also am a weary, and would serve another, and not myself. And whether all this be true I cannot tell, but as I guess it is an old report that has walked in wandering. For what is this delectable isle wherein a man may have all his desire, if it be not that Alador which I am to look for over sea? And who knows but I may come thither, and find my lady and my love? But to Bartholomew he told nothing of his musing, only he took him by the arm, and said that he would go with him, and see this city. And therewith he pressed his arm in token of fellowship, for he drew near to him in spirit, because of his voice, and because of the words which he had spoken. Chapter 24 How Ewan saw the city of the saints the first time, and how he heard the bells thereof. Now was Ewan once more upon pilgrimage, yet he had not that joy which he had aforetime when he left his house of Sulney. For then he went of his own free will, and followed after the boy that was no stranger to his blood. But now he was lonely and without desire, and though he had somewhat to seek, yet his going moved rather from despair. Also the sky was changed above him, for the year began to leave summer and to turn towards winter, and the green was brown and the brown yellowing and the nights coldened, and the days drew in. Moreover Ewan walked not so willingly with all his company, for some of them were but ale knights which had repented them when they were a-drunken, and some were swashers home from war, and others there were which loved anguishment above all, and being feeble goers would make themselves yet feebler, with peasen underfoot, and hairy shirts and body cords about them, Neither were they wholly at one in their emprise, for the half of them were in hope to be at rest in the city of saints, and the other half to be speedily at war against their enemies, so that many times when they sang, their singing was diverse, and their fellowship most like to go a grief. And in no long time this came to pass, for when they were a ten days gone upon their way, they that were angriest among them departed from the feeble ones and they set off across country at great random, saying how they would take the city by assault and keep it against all others. Then they that remained went every day slower and more slow, and though they had all one weariness, yet had they not all one mind, for they fell into much doubt and dispute concerning their two guides, whereof the one was a young lad that knew but little of that country, and the other was an old man, and blind these many years. So at the last they were severed again into two bands, and went their ways. 
for they that went with the youngling said how they would build a new city and forsake the old but ewan and a five or six more went not with them for bartholomew entreated ewan against his will then they set forward again and came to a country of hills and before they entered upon the hills the old blind fell a dying that was their guide and they found a warm village under the hills and left him there for it was plain to see that his time was come then ewan and bartholomew thought to go their way to find the city or to end in seeking it but they that had come so far would go no farther with them for they were afeard to leave their guide or living or dead so these twain entered alone upon the hills and came through them in three days and when they had passed through they saw the city there below them and it lay in the midst of a plain upon a hill that was but a great mound with a river thereby like silver flowing and the sea was fast by beneath the sun setting and the river went thereto through meadows and through boskage then ewan and bartholomew came down towards the foothills and drew nearer to the city and when they were upon the foothills they saw it over against them in marvellous wise for the walls of it were of a white old age with great bastions between all rounded and before the walls were meadows and above them were massy trees and within the city the roofs were of red and of grey and among the roofs were spires and domes and high towers innumerable and ewan saw them all clearly against the sky and they were all passing beautiful and not one of them like another and there lay upon the city an enchantment like to a mist or dimness upon it for to such as stood without and looked upon it and beheld the walls and the gardens and the high towers thereof it seemed ever to be abiding in ancientry and peace as of no earthly city but to those within it showed after another fashion and while ewan and bartholomew stood still looking upon the city the sun set and dusk came round about them and in the dusk they saw a glimmering of lights and they perceived that in that city was full plenty of chapels and of halls for on every side there were great windows and in the windows were many lights shining rich and orderly window by window a line upon the darkness also they heard suddenly a ringing of bells so many and so sweet to hear that they were astounded with the harmony of them for they sounded one under another as it might be under deep and shallow water and there was one great bell which donged below all other and the sound of it came up to ewan like a sound from the bottom of the sea End of part eight.